What's up guys? Welcome to Ghana Near Photography. My name is Don Alabi. Today I'll take you through the best frequency separation method in Photoshop. And hey, watch to the end because I have something awesome to give away. And oh, this awesome shirt I'm wearing is provided by Creative Loop Designs. You can check them out on Instagram. They have lovely shirts made of um, crochet, handmade crochet. It's of high quality. So don't forget, check them out on Instagram and make your purchase. If you've been following my tutorials for some time now, you realize that I make use of the array panel with the frequency separation, dodge and burn, and a couple of other stuff. There are people who think without the Retouching Academy panel or other plugins, they won't be able to retouch well. Now, this video is to prove to you that you can create your own frequency separation action and not depend on any plugin or anybody's action. But if uh, you find it difficult creating your own action then i have a giveaway for you at the end of this video i'll provide a link so that you can download this action and then use it anytime you want without having to create it over and over again this beautiful image was shot in collaboration with two other photographers, Mr. Shots and Shutter Factory. Now, this is the power of collaboration. So if you are not collaborating, I encourage you to look out for other photographers whose works interest you and then have a collaboration with them. It really helps. So today we won't make use of the Retouching Academy panel. So let me just close it. We are going to do everything from scratch. Now, let me take you through how to create your own frequency separation. So first of all, we have a background layer. So we are going to duplicate this twice. So you can use command J, one, two. So we have two layers. So we'll name them accordingly. Now, it doesn't matter whatever you name them. What matters is what they will do for you. So for the bottom layer, some people call it um, color, others call it low frequency and all that. So we'll call it uh, low frequency just so you guys can remember and then the upper layer we'll call it high frequency so we'll go ahead and disable the high frequency layer and then work on the low frequency layer first so we go to filter blur gaussian blur and then we'll choose a value that works for us so the aim here is to take out all details so you can't see the details. So 10 works for me. Depending on your style or your image, you might need to alter this number. Okay, so that's it. You see now our image appears blurred because we've applied Gaussian blur to it. So let's move to the second layer, which is the high frequency. Now we go to image apply image where is that okay apply image and over here because i've done this over and over i have the value set here otherwise when you come here normally what you see is this and over here you see this yes so on a normal day this is what you will see so when you come here what you need to do is where layer is we want to work with the low frequency and over here the blending mode we want it to subtract from that so let's look for subtract good so we want a high frequency layer to be subtracted from the low frequency layer which is what this means now the scale is two and the offset is always one two eight there's a reason why it's one two eight because one two eight is half of um, two five six now i won't go deep into this to explain otherwise most of you will fall asleep by the time i finish <laughs> explaining so just take it like this um, one two eight is the median of uh, two five six which is the middle we, uh, we want middle gray so if you notice the image has turned into gray so now we have only the details over here so we click ok and this is what we have so we can select both of them and then create a group and name it frequency separation or whatever name you want so this is um, our thing now 
with me i usually create an empty layer in between these two and then work on but we'll leave that for for now now once you're done with this on the high frequency layer we change the blending mode to linear light so once we do that the image returns to normal so if you disable the whole frequency separation folder and then enable you don't see anything because we've separated the color from the texture and now if you put both of them back together we get the same thing as our background layer i hope you guys understand so if we disable this and disable nothing if we enable this we get the same image back so we just separated the color from the texture so we can work on them independently without um, destroying each other so if we want to work on color we go on the low frequency as blending the tones and all that we do it on the low frequency if we want to work on the texture we do that on the high frequency some of you might be asking how come you didn't do blemish removal before doing frequency separation you can actually do blemish removal using frequency separation frequency separation can be applied in various ways you can use it for fabrics backgrounds and all that but most people use it for skin retouching so we can use frequency separation to take off the blemishes independently so it doesn't affect the color so now what we are going to do is take off uh, blemishes so on the high frequency you Pick whatever blemish remover tool that you want. I have a video on how to do blemish remover. So I'll add the link up there so you can follow it and then learn from it. Over here, I'm going to use the clone stamp at a flow of 5%. So I'll zoom in all the way to 100%. And on the high frequency layer, I will take off these blemishes. So you see how it's working it's taking off the blemishes only on the texture layer the high frequency layer so it doesn't affect the color see so this is why you should be doing this over here and not directly on the full image see so let's take a quick look at before and after see very very effective right all right so that's not the main reason why we are here let's um look at the main reason why we are here on the low frequency we select our mixer brush tool now there are other ways of doing frequency separation but i find that using the mixer brush tool is the best for me and i'm sure it will be the best for you so let's um, select our mixer brush tool over here like this now if you come up here you will see there are lots of values here each person and what values they would want to set over here now i watched a video and the values were all set to 30 30 30 but i took the flow to 25 because that's what suits me so just go through the values and then see what works best for you just make sure that this option here is selected so this makes sure your brush is cleaned each time you finish using it it's just uh it's basic like you're painting something so after picking a color and then painting one area if you want to use a different color you just dip wash your brush and then dip it in the new color and paint as basic as that so with these values and then make sure sample all layers is not selected let's begin to brush over our image it's always good to zoom out so you don't have the image pointing directly into your face so you work on the size of your brush using your brackets open or close according to the area you want to brush on so you do gentle strokes you don't pick from this side and then just drop it in here you see what's happening if you do that it distorts your image so make sure your painting highlights separately and shadows separately just like this so you see i'm making short strokes not long strokes very very short strokes otherwise you end up distorting your image okay in order not to make this video long i at some point will just fast forward it so it doesn't get boring
So we worked on the low frequency layer and we have some blemishes over here, like this line over here to take care of. So let's go to the high frequency layer and then switch to our clone stamp. Zoom in so we can see clearly what the blemishes are. And then we just start sampling and then brushing over to take care of the blemishes. So as usual, my flow is at 5%. So it doesn't take everything away completely. It just softens it. That's what you should aim at. So here, you just want to soften this. You don't want to take it away completely. So we sample a clean area and then just brush over. So since this is a tutorial, I won't attempt getting everything perfect. So if you guys want me to add a raw file, just let me know in the comment section. And I'll gladly do that. We have this right here. Note we haven't applied any dodge and burn. Now what I love doing is after taking off blemishes, I go back to the low frequency and then with my mixer brush tool, I go a second layer of mixing because after taking out the blemishes, you realize that you might have displaced some of the pixels. So you want to go over and then make sure the blending happens again to give your image a good finish. This is fine. So let's do before and after before and after see how we've been able to work on this image to give it a better look than it was so this is what we have now as i was saying earlier i would usually add an empty layer between the high and the low frequency layers like this and then i'll just call it um color correction or anything because I will use that to do uh, skin tone blending in case there are some parts of the skin tones that I need to match or something. I will usually do that in Capture One, but sometimes it's uh, just maybe minor that I can do here. So let me just uh, call it tones. So don't worry, in the action that I will add to this, it will have all these things there, so you won't have to worry about them. So with that, I use the brush at a flow of 2% and then I go to areas where I think should blend in more. So if I do this before and after, I would want this place to blend in well. So I just sample, press and hold Alt or Option on your MacBook and then sample an area and then just gently brush over like this so i used to do this before i learned about dodge and burn so this is one trick i was using before i got to know about dodge and burn and it still works unlike um, airbrushing you are not working on the texture layer see it's below the texture layer so whatever you're doing doesn't take off the texture so just make sure you're selecting the color around where you want to brush. Reduce your brush size accordingly and then brush. So that gives you a, a dodge and burn kind of feel. This is uh, like a lazy man's way of dodging and burning. Not necessarily dodging and burning, just that you're taking the color around here and then painting. So if I take a bright color and then brush over, it brightens that area, which gives me the dodge effect and then if i take a darker color and then brush i get the burn effect that's cool right yeah so let's disable that see this is before and this is now you see as i said it's the lazy man's way of doing dodge and burn don't use this for <laughs> all your things but then this comes in handy when you you need it so you see with just this technique we've been able to work on this image from here to here let me zoom in a bit so you guys can see more so this is the full thing from here 
to here with just frequency separation nothing more nothing less so you see how amazing frequency separation is and this technique works best for me and i believe it will work best for you also just practice it and make sure you you know how to do it as promised i'm going to record this action and then add it as a downloadable link in the description so make sure you check it and then get a copy if you can't be creating this or if you think it's uh, too much of a work to create this just download it and enjoy it if you made it to this point then it means you've really enjoyed this tutorial and it's been helpful to you do subscribe if you haven't and make sure you hit the bell so you get notified anytime i upload don't forget to like this video i hope this has been informative for you and i'd like to thank you for watching